All right, Navigators, welcome to Wednesday Night Battle Stations. Let's begin our pledges. Everyone stand up nice, tall, and straight. Look to the American flag, hand over the center of your chest. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Let's turn our attention to the Bible. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. We're going to have some singing, then we'll get into the Bible lesson. All right, everyone stay standing, nice, tall, and straight. We're going to sing two songs. God's not dead, and he's got the whole world in his hands. Sing out now. God's not dead, he is alive. God's not dead, he is alive. God's not dead, he is alive. I can feel him in my hands, feel him in my feet, feel him in my heart, beat me, feel him in my soul. Woo! Feel him all over me. God's not dead, he is alive. God's not dead, he is alive. God's not dead, he is alive. I can feel him in my hands, feel him in my feet, feel him in my heart, feet, feet, feel him in my soul. Woo! Feel him all over me. All right, he's got the whole world in his hands. Sing out now. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me and sister in his hands. He's got you and me and sister. In his hands, he's got you and me and sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me and brother. In his hands, he's got you and me and brother. In his hands, he's got you and me and brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. All right, good job singing. Everyone have a seat. Get your Bibles out. Ready for the lesson. All right, take your Bibles to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Remember, we're continuing with our study through the book of Genesis. We started off with man's sin, Adam's fall. We talked about Enoch's walk. Today, we're going to talk about Noah's ark. Noah's ark, Genesis chapter 6. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at um, a little bit of background. After Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, man began to grow and multiply and cover the face of the earth. Also, the wickedness of man began to grow great. So the wickedness of man began to grow. And in Genesis chapter 6, verse number 5, it tells us, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Only evil continually. But let's look at our character. Let's look at the character. Let's look at Noah. In Genesis chapter 6, verse number 8, it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse number 9. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Let's look at the word grace. Grace is mercy undeserved. 
Grace is something that is offered and given, that is not expected, that is not demanded. It is freely given. It is grace. The verse number 9 tells us that Noah was a just man. The word in your Bible for just and right is the same word. Just, right. Justice, righteousness. Justification, righteousness. It says he was a just man, a righteous man, and he was perfect. And he was perfect. And also tells us that he walked with God. Remember last week we talked about Enoch. And that Enoch's walk with God was so great that the Lord wanted to bring Enoch from earth to his presence. So Enoch was not, for God took him. That's how close, and that's how close the fellowship of God became between Enoch and God. And Noah is Enoch's great-grandson. We see an example left him that tells us that he walked with God too. Now, neither of these men walked with God as Adam did in the garden, hand in hand, step in step, face to face. But this word walk does not restrict us to just merely a pace or a stroll. It is a lifestyle. It is a relationship. It is a continual um, communication and it was a continual uh, conversation where you go a certain direction with somebody and you don't stop. Enoch walked with God and Noah walked with God. To the point Noah was a just man. He was a righteous man. He was perfect in his generation. It says he was perfect here. He was as good as he could be. He was perfect in his generations. He was a righteous man. He was a just man. And he walked with God continually in fellowship. So we saw the, the background. We saw the character, Noah. Noah found grace. Noah walked with God. Now we're going to look at the conditions. Let's look at the conditions. We read verse number 5, and it says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the salts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord... That he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me I have made them. Verse number 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And that's conditions that we see Noah, our character, in. The world is not a pretty place. The world is full of wickedness. It's full of hatred. It's full of violence. It's not a nice place. It's not a kind place. It's a very heathenistic place. It's definitely not the conditions that we see Noah and God are on a personal basis in. It tells us that the world is very much in opposition. They're opposed to the ways of God. They're evil, they're wicked, they're, they're violent, they're unkind, and they're uncaring. And it was so great that God said, I'm sorry I gave this earth to man. I'm sorry I gave this world and gave man dominion of this world. And that is the condition that we find Noah in. But as we see, we found it said Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And he was just man perfect before God and uh, he walked with God. Verse number 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. We're going to look at the construction of the ark. So we have the character, we have the conditions, here we have the construction, verse number 13 through 14. And he says in verse number 14, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit thou shalt finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories thou shalt make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall 
died. So this is the construction of the ark. He gives Noah. Noah found grace because he was a just man, because he was a righteous man, and he was perfect in his ways. God looked at Noah and said, Noah, how would you like to have that conversation? Adam and Eve had conversations with God. Enoch walked with God and had conversations. How would you like to be doing your walk, being a just and a righteous man, having your walk and having your communication and fellowship with God? And then God brings this to your attention. And he said, Noah, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth. And behold, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. What a moment that must have been in Noah's life where he realized that the fullness of God's wrath of the evil and wickedness that they had seen and had discussed and had talked about had come to a head, and God said, that's it. I'm going to punish it. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to wipe it out. But Noah found grace, and so he gave him the blueprints and the plans. He said, you, go build this ark. And he tells us how he wants to make it, with what he wants to make it, the window, the door, how many levels, how long, how wide, how high. He gives him every detail he needs to know, and he brings him all the supplies, and he tells him what all he needs to come, come and bring along for the construction and for the voyage of the ark when the floods came. So we have the character, we have the conditions, we have the construction. We want to close now with the covenant. Genesis 6, verse 18. This is God and Noah. But with thee, God with Noah, but with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy son, sons, and thy wife and thy son's wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, to of every sort thou shalt bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee all the food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Now we're going to move ahead a little bit, continue with our last point in the covenant. We go to Genesis chapter 9, Genesis chapter 9, verse 8. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that goeth out of the ark to every beast of the earth, I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is a token of my covenant, which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a, for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is, all, that is on the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah went forth from the ark, where Shem, Ham, Japheth, Ham his father of Canaan, and the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. So that covenant was promised before the flood. And after the duration of the flood, when man leaves the ark, God says, this is my covenant. God wanted man to see the destruction that he had promised, but he preserved and he kept Noah and his family in the ark. He, the ark was a preservation for a righteous man and a righteous people 
to protect them from the judgment of God, just like we see in the book of Exodus, where the Passover meal, where the death angel passed over all the houses that had the covenant, that had the blood upon the door, and it went away, and it passed over. We see here that they went through the judgment unharmed. They went through the cleansing of the earth unharmed. They were preserved, and they were kept from the danger in the ark. And that covenant was that he would no more cause a flood to wipe out the earth. And every time you see a rainbow in the sky, it is a remnant of that covenant. Every time you see a rainbow in the sky, it says, my covenant still exists. I still keep my covenant. I still keep my promises. Even with all the great destruction that comes upon the earth through hurricanes and, and tidal waves and monsoons and floods, the whole earth and all flesh is still not destroyed by it. That is a covenant that was given, and you are a part of that covenant because it was given to Noah and his sons and to their generations and their families, of which every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth is a descendant of Noah and of one of his three sons. So we all still bear a relationship with God and that covenant that he gave. So we've seen... Uh, the character of Noah. We've seen the conditions of the world in Noah's time. We've seen the construction of the ark and of the thing built to preserve a righteous man and his family through the judgment. And we see the covenant that God established and promised Noah and fulfilled and signed with the, with the rainbow at the end of the flood as a promise. And we, can, we still live under the covenant and that promise today. So if we look back at the book of Genesis and the flood and we see the rainbow still in the sky, it tells us that God still remembers his covenant. God still keeps his word. So you as a Christian and you as a child of God, if God has given you something or God has promised you something, God keeps his word. You can look to the heavens every time it rains and see a rainbow in the sky and you'll know it's a testimony and a token that God says, I remember my covenants. I remember my promises. And our salvation as believers are like the ark. It was purpose built. It was made for us. There's one way to salvation. There's one door. There's one way into salvation. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door. We are kept. Our salvation keeps us, preserves us, protects us, and holds us for at the end of days when all the judgment, when all the turmoil, all the violence and all sin is removed from this world, we can come through that experience preserved, kept, safe, and under a promise of an eternal, all-knowing, all-loving God. So if there's something in your life that scares you and bothers you or attempts to harm your relationship with God, simply look to the sky every time it rains. You see the rainbow? God still keeps his word. God remembers his covenants. And if God remembers his covenant between Noah, who in the book of Genesis was a perfect man, a just and a righteous man, and if he remembered his covenant and his word he made with him, then you, as a born-again Christian and a child of God, God will remember that covenant and keep that covenant with you as well.